that mm. shared experience, that togetherness mm. builds a bond and then you can mm. go from there. And so um, encouraging them to have, you know, get group toys, um, puzzles, yeah. frisbee, things that they need one another to play. There's a lot of great mm-hmm. group games out there that they work together as a team and everybody wins or, you know, against the clock or something. Those are ways that they can build that that connection. Let's talk about some tools that we can use to help kids get along with one another. And I love that you talked about the importance of them learning to get along and love each other because that sets them up for successful relationships in the future, whether with their spouse, their coworkers, their own family members, their children, their in-laws. I mean, imagine (laughs) what a different world we would live in if we all learned how to get along with each other when we were young and how to accept each other's differences and things like that. Um, so, so let's talk through some tools that we can use as parents to help our kids get along with them one another. Okay. Well, I think the first one is the family unit. So understanding that they're part of a family, a heritage. Um, again, I know many people have started a new heritage, maybe they're first generation believers or first generation homeschoolers, and it, their family dynamic looks very different than what they grew up with. But you have a heritage that you're creating. And I'm not talking about you know, we came over from the Mayflower or my grandpa and immigrated from wherever. I'm talking about our name, our family name. And so yeah. um, our family name is so important. A good name is more desirable than great riches. And so your children carry your name um, wherever they go. So bad behavior reflects badly on the family. Good mm-hmm. behavior reflects well on the family. And we would tell our kids, you know, you guys are Seligsons. And so Seligsons don't lie. Seligsons are kind. Seligson share. This is how we, this is our family identity of who we are. Why? Because God has called us to be that way. That's the why. But that is who we are. And so I, we would continually come back to those kinds of phrases that we wanted our family to be known for. And that would help them um, internalize those, mm-hmm. those, you know, as they're going through Seligson share, Seligson share. I know Seligson share. I don't want to share. Well, <laughs> Seligsons are selfless. And so you, even if you don't want to, you, I mean, those are, those are, the, that's the terms that we want to utilize to help them to, to understand that this is biblical too. God has given us a name, a family that we carry with us. And, you know, we are, we will have unique things that we do as a family. And we'll talk about that in a little bit too. And, and many of them are fun and quirky or, or whatever. And those help bond at your children together too. But then understanding each other's uniqueness. And um, that's really important. How they react to things differently. And they will. Every individual, you know, your littles aren't going to understand how to be careful with the older's things. And so olders need to understand, yeah. you know, they're going to they're gonna tear apart. You spent, you know, 10 hours on this Lego model. Your three-year-old brother is going to demolish it if he gets his hands right. on it. Not because he doesn't like you or love you. It's because he's three. And he just right. wants to be where you are in your world. Um, so we need to consider that, you know, they also could put things in their mouths. And um, because they're younger than you, you love them and we will defer to them in many places and share. So when you have a safe opportunity with this little one, this is the time to share and do things. There will be times you do things as a big person away from the little one. Mm-hmm. So that's one issue, but it's because we're for them. And then as they get older, they can learn how each other processes things. Some children hold things in. Some things are, some some kids are just very emotional and you know exactly how they're feeling at all times. So discuss those things. Um, some kids, you know, like love languages, what what blesses each other yeah. and, and try personality tests as they get much older because you're going to find you've got introverts and extroverts. Some kids will bond better just being quiet, playing alongside each other. Some kids want to interact and talk. And for those who don't want to interact and talk, it's exhausting for them to you know, as a as an introvert, um, I love yeah. people. I love to talk to people, but it very energized, energy depleting. So after you know a conference, I'm just sleeping for a day. Uh, whereas a person who's an extrovert gets energized by that. They just want to be around fifteen hundred more people again. And so we have kids like that. We and they're yeah. not going to understand what what you know of yourself is how you tend to believe other people behave too, and oh, that's right. yeah. not necessarily the 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 way it works. You've got boys, you've got girls. Boys tend to be as a whole a little more energetic and maybe less communicative. Girls tend to be a little more emo- emotional or aware of their emotions. And so mm. um understanding them, helping them to understand themselves and then helping them to understand 
how the other one operates and how the other one um, behaves. And that's important for us as parents to know too, because sure. that will affect how we address them, how we, you know, parent them. Um, but again, it's it's so important to have conversations about these things so they can understand each other, but not after an explosion. Um, right. th- that's not the best time to do it. So uh, it's not a good time to wait for the toddler to, you know, rip up the Lego and say, well, you know, da 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 da. <laughs> it's because this is the time. It's time to do it. It's like when things are calm and maybe you're having dinner. Everybody's happy. They're eating food, you know, make chicken nuggets or whatever it is. There's no immediate conflict. And so that's the time to start talking about personalities. Hey, guys, I read about this. What do you guys think about this? You know, some people are this way. Some people are that way. How would you respond to this situation? Oh, interesting. I would behave this way and help them understand mm. those you, those unique behaviors because they'll they'll start to grasp that, you know, your sister when you say something harshly to just even if it's kind, but you say it in a harsh way or yeah. or volume, volume might make her she's very tender hearted and, and it just it hurts her her spirit when you speak loudly to her. Not that you didn't mean to be unkind, but understanding that helps them to then work through that and be more mindful of their interactions. And um, so that's a very important tool to help them understand. Um, another yeah. one is intentional togetherness. Uh, we you know, we want to work through how to share toys. We we we, sure. we we helping them understand that playing alone is not necessarily as much fun as doing things together. You know, I, I would I'll share with people, you know, um, who I've just met. Have you ever seen a movie that that someone else has seen and you love it? Like I a yeah. very common one is like Princess Bride. A lot of people have seen that. I was that. literally just gonna say the Princess Bride. And so if I would if I threw out in a <laughs> Best group movie you know, ever. Yes, give me a quote from Princess Bride, people who have seen it will start quoting things. And then all of a sudden right. you're laughing together because you've had a shared experience. That mm-hmm. shared experience, that togetherness mm-hmm. builds a bond and then you can mm-hmm. go from there. And so um, encouraging them to have, you know, get group toys, um, puzzles, yeah. Frisbee, things that they need one another to play. There's a lot of great mm-hmm. group games out there that they work together as a team and everybody wins or, you know, against the clock or something. Those are ways that they can build that that connection, yeah. um, togetherness. Sharing rooms, you know, there that that's that's a we tend in our culture to divide our kids, give them everything individually, keep them separate because it minimizes conflict, but then they're not learning how to, mm-hmm. to do that. We had three boys and a girl. Our girl was our youngest, and we had the boys separate at first for in two boys in one room, one boy and our baby daughter in the other room. And that third child, that third boy, would hear his brothers playing and laughing, and oh. I could tell he was sad. And so... We had a tiny house, but we moved the three boys together in the room. We put bunk beds and we did all kinds of crazy things to make it work um, because I wanted them to be together. They had that were created more friction and it was more work for me. But you all Mm -hmm. know this. Anything worthwhile is is hard work. Right. Schooling is not easy, but it's worthwhile. And the the fruit is so great. And so um, we worked out. I'm not saying you've got to put all your kids together in a room. But sure. <laughs> look for opportunities, which some people do, <laughs> right? Well, and that's you know that's okay, but it's yeah, it, it's it's rather than trying to to keep the peace because mm-hmm. separating like that is for me to keep my peace, so I can just get dinner, right? So I can just you know that screaming kid gets on that nerve in our brain, and we start going like this, and we go you know yeah. then we look really crazy, and our kids see us like this. And <laughs> we don't want that, um, but so we try to avoid that. But again, it, you're missing opportunities to train them to be together. Homeschool Insights is sponsored by CTC Math. If you're looking for a great online math program, visit ctcmath.com and try it for free. For more great homeschool inspiration and resources, listen to the Schoolhouse Rocked podcast every Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday. 